is Tim Root with your KLEK 1 to 2.5 FM weather. It'll be partly to mostly sunny, pretty warm today, 85 to 90, a south wind 10 to 15. Dry weather, mostly clear skies of a night around 70 with less wind. It'll be near 90, hot weather expected Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, partly to mostly sunny Friday through the weekend. Daytime temperatures right around 90, but plenty of sunshine to go around. Your life, your music, we're KLEK 1 to 2.5 FM. From Feature Story News in London, I'm Oli Barrett. Early results in India's general election have a lead for the governing party of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Russia says allegations it carried out airstrikes on civilians in Syria are part of a misinformation campaign orchestrated by the US. UK and Dutch voters are heading to the polls in European Parliament elections. And a redesign of the US $20 bill featuring an African-American anti-slavery activist has been delayed. It's 9.01. Community Conversations is brought to you by Arkansas Early Learning, offering no-cost child care in Jonesboro and Northeast Arkansas. Applications at arearlylearning.org. Arkansas Early Learning is a nonprofit organization. KLEK LP Jonesboro, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council. It's now time for Community Conversations, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters or sponsors. Good morning, everyone, and happy Thursday to you. I hope that you're having a great start to your day. You're tuned in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. My special guest today is no stranger to you all is Reverend Dr. Greg Ota. From, Good morning. Um, this time, instead of representing, well, he still always represents New Life Empowerment Ministries. Today, we're going to be talking about New Life Empowerment Development Centers, Centers Incorporated. And so, I want I've been looking on your website. Um, And because I want to refresh everyone's memory Mm -hmm. um, about the organization itself. So if we could go back a little bit. I know you've been here before discussing your Mm -hmm. program, but let's go back for those who may not be as familiar with. New Life Empowerment Development Centers is a ministry that is designed to bring technology to the less privileged who happen to have a building donated by the housing authority where we serve the low-income community on the north side of the city. New Life Empowerment Development Centers, we have about 40 laptops. We have about 13 desktops where we teach people basics of computer technology. We teach uh, Microsoft products. We help kids with homeworks and some other things that the kids might need. We actually feed the kids sometimes. That's what New Life Empowerment Ministries, New Life Empowerment Development Centers is. So now, one of the things that gave birth to this, most people don't know this, it started as a mobile computer lab. I was dealing, uh, I was doing this thing out of the trunk of my car. Hmm. We will go, we will go to Family Ties, which is an after school program. We will go to then uh, Agents of Change, which was an after school program. We've been to Micro Society okay. with uh, uh, Renee Woods okay. at some point to, to minister to the kids there. The, the, the plan was Teach people beginning of computer technology, get them to the intermediate level, yet get them to the advanced level. Okay. For the kids that don't want to go to college, but they have the aptitude for computers, we teach them the entrepreneur level, where they can fix computers and make a business out of it. Oh, okay. That uh, That was the master plan. Okay. Okay. So... Since you're not asking any questions, I'll keep talking. Well, I'm going to ask. <laughs> what I want to ask, you know, um, we know that in more, most of the lower economic uh, communities, mm-hmm. um, most children do not have access to these type of 
activities, right. um, programs, mm-hmm. what would you say is the biggest payout for the children that do, the children and their families that have access to these services? What we have actually done, as a matter of fact, I took a picture of one of the kids okay. that comes to the lab. We don't only teach computer literacy, we help them with their homework. Okay. Now, there was a little boy that used to, when he started coming to the lab, if you told him to read, he would cry and run out the door. Yesterday, glory to God, he shows up with a certificate from his school. Oh, wow. He has a certificate for reading. That's amazing. Made my day yesterday. So how long has he been coming to your program? All semester long. So he's made some marked improvements. Yes. Extreme improvements. Enough that they gave him a certificate. That's Enough awesome. that the school, math and science, gave him a certificate for reading. Wow. So oh. we're not only teaching technology, we teach discipline. Okay. We tell we, 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 we tell the kids this. And I, when we started this, this semester, I told them reading is not punishment. Because every time you, when we started this, when we tell them to read, people will cry, you will see their faces, they're sad, and this, that, and the other. So we had to find a way to make them understand. Look, when I tell you to read, it's not punishment. You're not reading for me, you're reading for yourself. You're getting information for yourself. Now, they come in, they, can I read? They're asking now, can I read? Okay. So we're not only focused on computer technology. We're focused on the whole person being developed in whatever grade they are. You are. I want to focus on the the word empowerment of the mm-hmm. title. Okay. Um, when you are giving them access to these different skills, these avenues, activities, mm-hmm. whatever you want to call them, you are in turn empowering them to become productive, mm-hmm. capable mm-hmm. Um, citizens. They're children now, but they're going to grow into young adults, Amen. to adults, and so. Mm-hmm. The seeds you're planting now within them is going to only enhance what they're learning along their life. Can only help them. <laughs> yes. It, okay. For me, I was raised in Nigeria. Okay. In a paramilitary environment. What that means is, when we go to high school, we don't live at home anymore. We live at school. Oh. At the age of 12, I live at school. I don't live at home with mom and dad. Do you get to visit often? Maybe once a month, I get to go home or my parents come visit me, but I, I don't leave the compound. Oh, wow. Now the compound is structured. I wear a uniform, I have chores, and I respect people ahead of me in class. That's why I say the paramilitary. You okay. wake up at 5.30, you have chores to do. By six o'clock, your chores should be done, you should be in the showers. By 6.30, I should be getting ready to go to the refectory, which is the cafeteria. Okay. By 7.30, I should be on my way back from refectory, get my book back, and be in the assembly at 8 o'clock. At 8 o'clock, there's prayer, there's announcement, and then I get to my classes by 8.30. That's very structured. So I sit in class from 8.30 till about 1.30. School is over. I go eat lunch. I go back to my dormitory. And what I'm telling you is everybody's doing the same thing at the same time, okay. no matter what class. I go back to the dormitory and I take a siesta. Okay. School is now over, but the life in the dorms continues. So after siesta, I get up, I have a little free time, and then it's back to study time. Okay. I got to go back to class. There's no teachers now. I study on my own. Okay. And there's a lights out time. So I study till maybe about seven. Then I could go play for a little while. Then at 10 o'clock or 9, I don't remember, the bell rings. I'm supposed to be in bed. Okay. So your day is very structured and very Very disciplined. And so you're trying to instill in these children now. Yes. If you apply these principles to your life, Mm -hmm. you can be a successful adult. Amen. Whenever you get into the working world, no matter what path you take, whether it's traditional college or technical school or being a business owner, entrepreneur Mm -hmm. of some Mm -hmm. kind. (laughs) What what we understand is success is not an accident. You don't all of a sudden, by surprise, become a millionaire. No, it's purposeful. (laughs) God gave all of us a brain. We have the capacity to load on our brains 
information out there. That's my responsibility. But if I'm not disciplined, I can't learn anything. Okay. If I can't learn anything, people will run circles around me in life all the time. Okay. So, like, we teach kids math in their life. Well, I don't know math. Well, what subject do you know? English. It's the same brain that knows English that has the capacity to know. You just have to discipline yourself. Okay. You, you just have to practice. So those are some of the things we teach. Not just computer technology. We're trying to train the whole person. Okay. And I know in previous conversations we've talked about how you also have various programs mm -hmm. that mimic games. However, the kids are learning more than they think they're learning. Amen. In the process of playing mm -hmm. these quote-unquote games. Mm -hmm. um, they're simple enough for them to understand they're fun and interactive. Mm -hmm. However, it's still a learning experience. Okay. There's one we call cool math. Okay. And there's another one called cool math for kids. Okay. In this, in this program, it's free online. They, they sign on cool math for kids and you can go to games. Now, what it does is it's a risk game. Okay. Now, I'm going to talk about two, two of them. One is it helps you in your speed in typing. Oh. The more accurately you type what shows on the screen, the faster your car goes. Oh. <laughs> and everyone in the lab could play the same game. Oh, no. <laughs> so the more I type the words I see correctly, the faster my car goes. Okay. The math one is the same race, except it will pop up 9 plus 1. And you only have a few seconds to click the right answer. So the quicker you click the answer, the faster your car goes. So they are learning to think on their feet. Okay. It's not me telling you, you fail the test. By the race, I don't have to say anything to you. Okay. You know you need to get better to win this race. So they get hooked on the, on the game, but it's actually forcing them to learn. And it's creating the spirit of competitiveness, but... Mm -hmm. um, not competitive in a way that you want to just tear the next person down, but pushing themselves to want to do better and be better. Mm -hmm. And so that, again, will carry over into their life later on. Mm -hmm. um, they won't settle for just mediocre, um, <laughs> whatever, right. or mediocre success, I should say. <laughs> um, they will push themselves mm -hmm. and be more competitive with themselves, hopefully, mm -hmm. um, to want to achieve as much as possible. <laughs> it, it's, it's an exciting time for me and the people uh, that volunteer. I have about three volunteers. I need more. But what happens is you can see when they first come, we tell them to read or do math or whatever. You can tell there's... It's resistance. Okay. But because we have candy and food, some of them are hungry enough to stay for the food. Okay. But in order to get the food, you got to do some work. Okay. So now, it's in reverse. They, they come in, Dr. Order, what do you want me to do? You want me to read today? You want me to draw? You want me to write? Oh, wow. So anything that is creative, I will let them do. So now they come in asking you, what do you want me to do? A little kid came in yesterday. There was food on the table. I said, check your snack, eat and sit down. Just wait for your food. It's Wednesday. We don't usually do anything on Wednesdays. Okay. She says, can I draw? Okay. I said, yes, you can draw. Well, how about you give me some math problems to solve? Why would you want this? <laughs> These are things that they used to resist. Now she say, Set some math problems for me, and I'll go solve them. I want to, I want to do that. Okay. She's only seven. Wow. Now, with the kids that come to the center, do you ever get to interact with their parents or other family members? That's one of the disappointing things. One or two of the parents come around. Okay. The kid I was telling you yesterday, her mom is constantly checking on them. Okay. She says, discipline them if they are out of line, because I don't want them misbehaving here. She's one of the few. Yeah. yeah, one of the few. Some of them never set foot there. Do you feel the children would be even more successful in their studies, academics, or just all around in their life if their parents, caregivers, or other family members became more involved and engaged in what they were doing? Yes. The, the few kids I've talked about uh, that are success stories, their, their parents somehow dovetail into what we're doing. They support what we're doing. Okay. 
not necessarily financially, but they said, uh, one of the parents came in and I was insisting on a little girl finishing her math assignment. Mm-hmm. And she's looking at her mom to let her out. She said, no, you do what Dr. Oda <laughs> tells you. You don't come home unless you do what he tells you. Because I, I would coin this, this, this phrase now. Every, every kid that comes in there knows it. Reading is not punishment. Reading is not punishment. Oh, I tell right. them what, go read. It's not pun- I'm not punishing you. Go read. Okay. You read for yourself. So now, some of the words they couldn't pronounce before, because we make them do this every day, they no. take a whole book and read, read, read to you. That's awesome. Now, the little boy I was telling you yesterday, he couldn't pronounce D-U-C-K, duck. Okay. He calls them duckies. Oh. Because he sees the picture, and he remembers what kids call them. He not read the word. I said, that's not what he says. Yes, he does. No, read it. Sound it out. They sounded it out. From then on, it hasn't been the same. That's awesome. I want to get back to that. We're going to say good morning to a few people. Uh, Dr. Sharice Jones, right? She says good morning. She's in South Carolina. Can I come? I don't know. I wish you would bring some seafood back this way. <laughs> <laughs> um, good morning to Kaylee Roman and Miss Sonia Hunter. All right. So, um, touching back on the helping the children learn how to read and mm-hmm. sounding out. And um, do you find that... Some of them have relied, before they came to you, they've relied on what they've heard other people say and mm-hmm. how it's been taught to them mm-hmm. versus trying to actually read it for themselves. Right. Um, also, <laughs> um, do you feel that's kind of a downfall with some of our kids that they don't either, now that this is nothing, <laughs> no shade against the teachers, they're doing the best they can. Mm-hmm. But because every student learns differently, Mm-hmm. And the school system is set up to operate in a certain way. Mm-hmm. Every child is not getting exactly what they need. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, there are three ways to learn. There's auditory, listening. There's sight, to see. There's kinetics, to do. Okay. Some people learn the three ways. Not only with their listening, they need to see and they need to do. Then they get it. Some people, by just listening, they got it. So, the school system is doing the best they can. But here's what's happening. The discipline needs to be at home before they go to school. So, you send your kid at school to school with a bad attitude, and you want the teachers to correct them, but you don't want them disciplined. Now, if the teacher disciplines the child, the mother goes to school, or the father goes to school, and takes it out on the teacher. I'm not saying all this is 100%. But what happens is this. If one kid who doesn't want to do their work because they can't learn auditorily, they are put in a corner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're a troublemaker. They're put in a corner. So they have this attitude. If I don't want to do it, I I don't have to do it. Some of them are allowed to do that. Not in the lab, you don't. You either do what we ask you to do or we show you the door. Because, here's, here's, my, here's my point. I told you I was paramilitary. That means there's a rule for this house to be where it is. Okay. You can't come bring your own rules in this house. Take the rule outside. We have a set of rules. We'll be here. That's why these walls are still here. Because okay. if we lose those rules, we'll lose the walls as well. It don't matter how big or small you are. We're not there to punish you. We're not there to hurt you. We're there to help you. Okay. So if you bring your own rules, you go right back outside. Okay. It, it's simple for me. I'm not about anybody here. <laughs> I'm not going to touch you. I'm not. But if you don't want to read, you don't want to do anything you're asked to do, you can leave. Wow. Now, with the children that mm-hmm. give you some resistance in the beginning, mm-hmm. um, and we know from work, you know from working with children, I work with adolescents, the mm-hmm. teenage age range. Right. They're not going to always tell you what they need, but they're right. going to kind of behave in a way to get your attention. Mm-hmm. So with those kids that give you a little pushback, mm-hmm. do they eventually warm up and say, okay, they do. They do. I'm going to discipline myself, I'm going to follow the rules, and I'm going to grab it. This, this, <laughs> this is interesting. There's a young man, he's about 13, I'm not going to call his name on the air. He will come busting in the door. Like just bam. Yeah. Just. <laughs> and I'll say, go back and try again. This is my house. You just don't walk in here. So he'll go knock. 
And I say, come in, he'll come in. Then I make him speak. You have to speak to the one who's in the house before you come in. Okay. I don't care what you do at school. This is my house. Okay. Now, what happens is you get pushback. But you got to know somehow why they are pushing back. Is it something they do at home? Is it something they do at school and get away with? Okay. How do you get around that? I don't always put them out the first time. Okay. <laughs> when they come and they behave the wrong way or the way I think is wrong, I will tell them. You don't come in a man's house and don't speak to him. If he asks you a question, not mm -hmm, yes sir or no sir. I don't I wouldn't accept anything less. It's not for me. Okay. The sir don't do nothing for me. He doesn't add to my money, my he doesn't do anything for me. It's for him. Because when you need something from someone, you have to show some reverence. Because yeah. if you don't, they're not going to be willing to give it to you. So if you come in my house, you want me to let you use my computers and eat my food and enjoy the air conditioning, there's got to be something coming from you that makes me want to do that for you. Okay. Oh, you're going to preach a whole sermon just on that. Uh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so those are the things we insist on. Some people thought I was, man, you, you mean. I said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to step out of the room for 20 minutes and see how you do with them. Okay. I came back and they said, you know, I could be just as mean as him. I said, oh, really? <laughs> it's not being mean, it's being strict. Mm -hmm. Because you have a standard that needs to be kept. Look, all of us, nobody has a job that a check is written to them and they do their own thing. You do it the way the employer says you do it if you want to get paid. Okay. We're going to put a pause right there. Okay. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to pick up our discussion talking about the summer program and other activities that you okay. offer. Um, you can give us a call, 870-277-1080, or drop a message in our Facebook live feed. But we'll be right back after these announcements. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. Do you know what your child's apps are capable of? I'm Mark Merrill with today's Family Minute. From iPhones to iPads, laptops to video games, it seems like our kids are never short on entertainment. But even with our kids spending more and more time using technology, our job as parents remains the same, to guard our children's hearts and minds. Knowing what apps your child uses is key, as well as knowing what those apps are capable of. Here are four of the top apps kids are using. First, there's Instagram. Sharing photos is a wonderful way to stay connected with family and friends, but be sure your child's account is set on private to avoid unfiltered messages. Second, Luminosity is a great app to exercise your mind with brain teasers. Remember, your family first. Family Minute is made possible by the Kappa Nu Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization committed to service to all mankind. Kappa Nu Omega Alpha Kappa Alpha on Facebook and K N O M E G A 1908 Dot com. Family Minute is brought to you by the Gears Foundation, a nonprofit organization providing students with assistance in their academic and career pursuits. Gears Foundation on Facebook, Gears underscore Inc. on Instagram, and the Gears Foundation at gmail.com. It's graduation season, and KLEK 102.5 FM is offering you an opportunity to congratulate or shout out that special graduate in your life for just $10 per message. The messages will air from May 1st through 25th at 7.31 a.m., 12.31 p.m., and 5.31 p.m. Proceeds go to help keep KLEK on the air. KLEK will also donate a portion of the proceeds to the Sonia D. Williams Scholarship Fund of the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. To sign up and purchase your greeting for that special graduate, visit our website at www.klekfm.org or call 870-277-1080. 
This event is a KLEK fundraiser. KLEK thanks C.J. Pepper and the staff of Life Strategies Counseling Incorporated for helping people through hard times in life such as depression, family issues, stress, abuse, and more. They offer counseling and therapy for all ages, individuals, families, and groups. They are located at 1217 Stone Street, phone number 1-866-972-1268, or online at lscihelp.com. The Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated was established on June 28, 1997 by 13 dynamic women who accepted the challenge of chartering the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter. Today, the chapter continues to impact the Jonesboro community by sponsoring programs such as the Sonia D. Williams Scholarship Breakfast, Community Back to School Bash, Delta Academy, Voter Registration Drive, and Autism Awareness. Our focus correlates with the national theme, Joy in Our Sisterhood, power in our voice, and service in our hearts. Our chapter supports Delta's five-point programmatic thrust, economic development, educational development, international awareness and involvement, physical and mental health, and political awareness and involvement. More information about the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated is available at www.jonesboroalumnidst.org or via email jonesboroalumni at live.com. Did you know that KLEK 102.5 FM is a nonprofit organization? Did you know that you can donate to KLEK 102.5 FM and your donation is tax deductible? Donations to nonprofit organizations such as KLEK can reduce the amount of taxes you may owe the IRS or increase the amount of any potential tax refund. Support your KLEK today. You can donate by calling 870-277-1080, visiting our studio at 1411 Franklin Street in Jonesboro, or on our website, W www.klekfm.org. We at KLEK 102.5 FM are blessed and grateful for your support. And now back to community conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM with my special guest, Reverend Dr. Greg Ota from New Life Empowerment Development Centers Incorporated and their tagline or motto is empowering individuals, families, communities, and nations. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, We talked a lot about um, excuse me (coughs) how the services you provide Mm -hmm. um, enhance the skills of the children that attend it empowers them to be successful or want to be successful um as they you know go through life you know you are equipping them with the necessary skills to be able to learn in any capacity Mm -hmm. no matter what they think they can do or can't do you help to reshape their mindset about what they can do Mm -hmm. (laughs) and what they're capable of so that's that's the that's the empowerment part of what we do Mm -hmm. and so you know along with the computer programs you do something you know particular in the summer versus Mm -hmm. you know what to do throughout the school year so let's Mm -hmm. get into talking about what you have planned for this summer we have a 10-week program that okay. minister Lube has designed that starts on june 3rd we have ve- very limited space okay okay we'll take adults and we'll take kids family ties on the other side is a sister organization they support us we support them okay so if you have little kids who need a place placement in summer call Ms. Wakanda Cox, she's the executive director of that uh, of that organization. Actually, they feed us every day from Family Ties. The kids that come to the lab, okay. Family Ties sends them dinners every day, even okay. now, yeah, every day. So, for our own program, like I said, we only have 10 day staff. We have actually 13. But space is the issue. We have laptops that we could bring out. January 3rd through the 7th, we're going to be talking about Tinker. June 3rd? Yeah, June 3rd through the 7th. Okay. We're going to be talking about Tinker. Tinker is kids' coding platform. 
Oh, coding. Coding platform, which this this governor of the state has been pushing. I want to touch on coding right quick. Okay. Um, with the way society is transitioning to more technological advancements, mm -hmm. it's very important for the our kids to have knowledge of what coding is mm -hmm. um, and how to even read code mm -hmm. and how to recognize when something is wrong in a software in a program and mm -hmm. how to that can land that alone can land them a very lucrative job yep <laughs> learning how to read and decide how to decipher right and how to code period <laughs> okay so what we're offering is this tinker for this week okay. it's a self-paced online program okay. i'm gonna be learning it too because i don't know it oh okay. we, we're all gonna be online learning this okay we're just gonna play supervisor <laughs> <laughs> So, as well as an engaging programming curriculum for schools and camps. So, we're, we're going to get into this type of coding. Okay. In the second week, we're going to get into game design. Oh. Most of the kids that come into the lab, they want to play games on the computer. We let them. Because, if you like to play games, every single kid can tell you what's wrong with the game they're playing. Hmm. Now, if you teach them how to design the game, you teach them how to go around their frustrations in the game they're already playing. Again, I want to just interject real quick. Again, these skills learned can lead them to making money. How many times do we hear about someone developing an app, a game, mm -hmm. and it gets downloaded, say 99 cents? Facebook. Is um, one. So <laughs> if even if the app it may be free, there may be advertisers and investors. Mm -hmm. um, so every time somebody downloads it mm -hmm. and they look at those ads, they're mm -hmm. still getting paid. So anyway, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Just <laughs> I always love to tell kids of ways how they can make their residual income some type of way and or build up. It, it doesn't have to be residual <laughs> either. Okay, it could well, be your main income. Steady income. Okay. Here, here's a. Uh, let me switch hats for a second. There are spiritual gifts that God is giving all of us. But because we don't know what they are, we're trying things. And that's the only way to find out. Okay, do no work, need no tools. So until I try something, I don't even know if I'm good at it. Okay. If I look at it and I'm scared of it, I don't know what my aptitude is towards that thing until I try it. Okay. Okay. So once I try it and I like it, I like it so much I'm doing it every day. Now I'm better than everybody else who's been doing it. Now every time they have a problem that area, they're coming looking for me. All right. I could charge anything I want. That's right. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll go move. We'll go. <laughs> so the third week, June 17th through the 21st, we're going to talk about STEM. Oh, okay. Okay. That's science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Okay. Okay. So... What, what we're trying to do is expose people to the different aspects of learning. See, people say science and it's intimidating to some other people. Okay. Math is one of the subjects people are so easily intimidated by. There is nothing in math that is not in English language. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because you could use the wrong tenses in statements. You could say the wrong thing backwards because you're speaking slang, but it's not the proper language. The same thing you can do with math. The only problem is math, the result is stuck. Everybody sees it. Okay. Two plus two is four. If you write five is wrong, it's obvious to anybody. It's not so obvious in, in language in English or French or Spanish. See, we can cut corners with language and nobody knows because they don't know the language. Mm -hmm. Math is a little different, but it's the same brain you use to speak the right language that you can use to do the right math. But everybody has a level. And I want to touch on this again. Okay. <laughs> um, and this is, you know, things that I've been, you know, learning as I go along. Um, and as I've been growing up, whether we realize it or not, mm -hmm. All of these aspects of STEM are in our everyday life. Everyday life. I mean, if you if you are a chef, baker, whatever, you have to learn math. You mm -hmm. have to know how to measure. Mm -hmm. 
ingredients. Um, mm-hmm. There's a science behind cooking, mm-hmm. um, the right temperature, the right whatever, you know, Amen. so in every aspect of your life, mm-hmm. there is science, math, technology. Mm-hmm. Always. <laughs> um, and so I would love for parents and caregivers to really start having these open discussions with their kids and mm-hmm. helping them to expand their thought process of how these elements mm-hmm. play into their everyday life. Mm-hmm. The products we use, mm-hmm. there's a there's science to that and there's mm-hmm. mathematical equations to how much of each product, each, you know, whatever goes into that product. So anyway, I'm not going to go too far in that, but <laughs> you, know, you get the point. <laughs> so math, let me, let me talk about this just for a fleeing second. Did you know when God told Moses to make the anointing oil, mm-hmm. he gave him a formula to do it? Measures, weights. Wow. <laughs> take 12 and a half pounds of this, take 25 pounds of this, take one gallon of this. So if you don't know how to measure, how would you make that? This is God speaking to Moses. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, I'll give you another example. The reason why we need to teach people to read. They said they brought a woman who was caught in adultery to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus bent over and wrote in the ground. What was he writing? Where did he learn how to read and write? So he had to learn to read and write. So if you don't know how to count, don't know how to read and write, where are you going in life? You're going to be dependent on someone else who can take advantage of you. (laughs) Even if you are a musician, you think you're so talented. When they write you a check, you can't read it. How do you know you achieve it? Mm-hmm. So who's that person you pay money to read for you when you should have been reading yourself? So that's money you're losing that you don't need to lose if you just learn how to read. Let me leave that alone. Okay. Let's go back to <laughs> science, technology, engineering, and math. All right. Every day we apply these things. We apply these things in our everyday life. It behooves us to get a little bit more information about what we do in life. Just a little bit more information. You don't have to have a PhD in any of this. Just need to know enough to function. Mm-hmm. That's all we're trying to do. Because in a week, we're not going to do justice. Yeah. They're just going to whet everybody's appetite. The ones that are really interested, they're going to dive in. Okay. Okay. The fourth week, we're going to talk about JavaScript. Oh. I see that pop up on my computer all the mm-hmm. time. And I'm mm-hmm. like, what does that mean? <laughs> Okay. It's the language that your programs runs on. It's also coding. Okay. It's also coding. So then in the fifth week, we got ten week course now, we're halfway through, right? Okay. Okay. Week five, we're gonna introduction to Python. And what is that? It's a programming language that lets you work quickly and integrate systems more effectively integrate systems. systems more effectively okay uh, like give you an example I'm a trained industrial designer we use AutoCAD we use SolidWorks two different design programs okay we have uh, oh, can't think of this other name <laughs> <laughs> we have SketchUp and we have other programs out there that do drawings, okay. do renderings and all that stuff. They all speak different languages. Okay. Python is a language that integrates SolidWorks with AutoCAD and this other one and okay. this other one. Okay. I could complete, complete the task without being in one particular language. Okay. Mm. That sounds very interesting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right. So week six. Week six, we're going to back to introduction to... Tinker. Okay. We're going to review what we did in Tinker, which was the first week. Okay. And we're going to review Microsoft Word. So in other words, we're reviewing what we did in week one, and we do some exercises in Microsoft Word. You know, even at my age, (laughs) I am still learning that Word, with each new, um, what do you call it? when they bring out a new like upgrade new version yeah new version mm-hmm. they add new features yep. and i'm still learning now that there's things that i can do mm-hmm. um i'm in week six of a current class okay and i'm just sadly just finding out that microsoft word you know they have all these templates for right. different documents right they have an apa style document uh pay, you know if you want to write a paper in apa style mm-hmm 
it's already formatted for you. <laughs> and here I am, been doing all the formatting myself. Mm-hmm. And then they have all these other options that you can look up a word, use a thesaurus, mm-hmm. you know, really make your paper, whatever you're typing. Anyway, so <laughs> Word is amazing. <laughs> it's not as just the basic typing, you nope. know, nope. Uh, program. <laughs> do, do you know in Word, you know how you see forms and there's boxes you could put a check mark in? Mm-hmm. Do you know how to do that in Word? Out of the top of my head. <laughs> okay. But those are the things we teach. They are available in Word. Wow. Do you want to create a flyer? It's already pre-designed. What kind of flyer do you want? Is it a cookout flyer? Is it a graduation flyer? What is it you want to do? You go into the data bank, database, that's in Word, built into Word. You just say new, I need a template for flyer. And it will give you all kinds of flyers that you could pick. Just change the words. Wow. So those are things that people have available. Okay, I want to write a resume. I don't know what my resume needs to look like. I just go to new. And I say, give me a template for resume. And I look through it. I like the one. I like the appearance. I click that. I just change the words. That's awesome. So this, these are the things that you can handle pictures in Word. Mm-hmm. I'm learned, I love how you can move things around. And you can move things <laughs> around. You can even put music in it also in PowerPoint. Oh, I love PowerPoint. I okay. had to do several for several other classes. So yeah. <laughs> you, you're keeping me too long on week six. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Move on. <laughs> Week seven, back to introduction of game design that we already okay. talked about. And we're going to review PowerPoint. Oh. We're going to review PowerPoint. What well, have you learned in PowerPoint? Do you know how to time your PowerPoint? So you turn it on and it will play on the screen continuously, playing the same music over and over and keep cycling until you push escape. Or do you want a uh, PowerPoint that you control? Like with the clicker or something. The clicker or click off the mouse or whatever. You talk on it and this, that, and that. You click and it goes to the next one. Now, also in PowerPoint, I have 15 slides. What kind of transition do I want? Do I want it to dissolve? Do I want it to slide away? <laughs> you know, all kinds of stuff. Very exciting stuff. It is. And once kids <laughs> learn how to do that, they can create amazing projects. <laughs> About three years ago, we had a student. He was 10 then. He's 13 now. We had him create his own PowerPoint, 10 years old, in the lab. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> That's awesome. So week eight, July 22nd through 26th. We're going to go back to STEM. Okay. Find out what we found out in the first time we went through STEM. Okay. Now week nine, we're going to go back to JavaScript. Okay. And we're going to review Excel. I need to be in that class. Uh-huh, you need to be in that class. <laughs> Excel is my enemy. Okay. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> Excel, see, all these Microsoft products, they are deep. They are really deep. If you dig down, there's beginners, there's intermediate, there's advanced. So in Excel, Excel will handle pictures, will handle graph, will handle numbers. Mm. A different way than Microsoft PowerPoint or Word. Mm-hmm. But it's the same program. And did you know you can intertwine them? I could put an Excel spreadsheet in the PowerPoint and make it such that if I change my Excel, the PowerPoint gets changed too. Mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, how old can you be to go to these classes? <laughs> 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 okay. All right. So the next week. <laughs> week 10, the final week, we review Python. Okay. And we do activities in it. Then it's graduation. Oh, wow. All right. And so the reason why I broke it down to 10 weeks, you don't have to come all 10 weeks if you don't have the time. You could come in fe- week one, introduction to Tinker, and you walk away. We could give you a certificate for having participated in the introduction to Tinker. But why not come all 10 weeks? Because you're <laughs> providing such valuable information. Well, you got to remember that where we are, the uh, turnover is high. Okay. People move in that neighborhood. Yes. They live for three months. 
they pull up and leave and they take their kids with them now they've been there for two weeks to have the time they were in there but now they, they've moved across town there's nothing you can do about that i understand all right so since the program starts june 3rd mm -hmm. when is registration and is there a fee or tell us all of that information well it's a hundred thousand dollars per kid no, no. i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> There's no charge. No charge. Yeah, you need to call our number. Okay. 277-1799. Okay, so that's... 870-277-1799. All right, so contact Reverend Greg Ota or someone to answer the phone. At the Somebody line. will answer the phone. And then they just need to let you know they want to register for the... Mm -hmm. We we'll have very limited CD. All right, so again, limited seating, so get your kids in now. And then what's the time of the program? We're going to be running from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Okay. So from 9 to 2, mm -hmm. and that gets kids That's five hours. That gives them something to do out of the house and something mm -hmm. productive mm -hmm. um, away from the TV. And instead of mm -hmm. playing somebody else's game, they could be learning how to design their own games. Amen. <laughs> All right, and they get to interact with other children. They get to um, interact with them. And make some new friends. Okay. But we we still have a standard that we keep in the lab. Mm -hmm. We're not going to keep you sitting down for five hours teaching and lecturing all the time. No, mm -hmm. that's not what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to pace it so we, it's time to eat. Okay. It's time to play all the games. It's time to learn. Okay. Okay. So if you are coming, know we have discipline in the lab. All right. Okay. Obey the rules and you walk away with something. You can't come there and do what you want to do. Folks, don't send your kids if they're not trained at home. Okay. We'll be forced to put them out. Okay. Because what happens with an unruly kid, he doesn't want to learn. He's keeping others from learning because he's making so much noise. Okay. Okay. It's a learning environment. We like, we allow some freedom. I, I don't, personally, I don't like a lot of noise. Okay. Yeah. There's a playground attached to the lab. We'll let you go play for a while. Okay. Don't play in the lab. Because they are delicate equipment that other people are trying to learn. That's right. That's all. That's all. All right. <laughs> and so, um, aside from your summer program and some of your other programs you offer during the school year, mm -hmm. do you teach uh, maybe the kids the difference between a PC or desktop versus a laptop? Mm -hmm. Can they do the same things, what they do differently, and things of that nature? What we teach. Let's take a break. Soon. Yeah, let's take a break. Okay, so we'll pick that a conversation <laughs> yep. up. All yep. right. So we'll pick the conversation up about the difference between laptops and desktops. When we come back, we'll say good morning to Miss Jackie Denise Gorham and Austin Ezulu. Okay. Oh, he's watching from Nigeria. All right. Thank you for checking <laughs> in. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after these announcements. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. We're back with Money Matters. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. Here's how to protect yourself from fake IRS phone scams. If you get a phone call from someone claiming to be from the IRS and you know you owe taxes or think you might owe taxes, hang up and then call the IRS at 800-829-1040. The IRS employees at that line can help you with a payment issue if there really is one. Now, if you know you don't owe taxes, then call and report the incident to the Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration at 800-366-4484. Now, if you've been targeted by these scams, you should also contact the Federal Trade Commission at ftc.gov and also add IRS telephone scam to the comments of your complaint. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. for Money Matters, a product of American Urban Radio Networks. Money Matters is made possible by the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization focused on joy in our sisterhood, power in our voice, and service in our hearts. www.jonesboroalumnidst.org. Money Matters is brought to you by Bancorp South, offering checking, savings, loans, 
credit cards, and wealth management. Five locations in Jonesboro to serve you. www.bancorpsouth.com or 870-972-9800. Money Matters is brought to you by the Gears Foundation, a nonprofit organization providing students with assistance in their academic and career pursuits. Gears Foundation on Facebook, Gears underscore Inc. on Instagram, and the Gears Foundation at gmail.com. Meineke of Jonesboro is now Starks Auto Service, a full-service auto repair and vehicle maintenance center offering engine and transmission repair brake service tires oil changes and more performed by ase certified mechanics starks auto service 2813 south caraway road in jonesboro 870-204-7112 starks auto service jonesboro.com the summer months are the most dangerous time for youth. More are experimenting with alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs during this time, and there is an increased occurrence of accidents and deaths as a result. Be aware and be safe. This message is brought to you by Crowley's Ridge Development Council. The McDaniel Law Firm, 400 South Main Street in Jonesboro, is a firm believer in justice and equality for the minority community. The McDaniel Law Firm has fought for our rights for over 44 years. The McDaniel Law Firm offers legal help for wrongful death, as well as trucking and automobile accidents. Bobby and Brett McDaniel are available for a free consultation at 870-336-4747 or at www.mcdaniellawyers.com. Hi, I'm R. Dub, host of Sunday Night Slow Jams, with a special invitation to join me this Sunday night. We're going to slow it down and make the most of the last few moments of your weekend with slow jams and special expressions to the ones you love. So come on through and bring a friend. I'll see you for Sunday Night Slow Jams. Sundays from 8 to midnight on 102.5 KLEK. The Mu Omicron Lambda chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated was established on January 1st, 1977. Originally serving Blytheville, Arkansas, and now serving Jonesboro, Blytheville, Osceola, Marion, and West Memphis, Arkansas. Today, the chapter continues to make an impact by focusing on Alpha's national community outreach initiatives such as My Brother's Keeper, A Voteless People is a Hopeless People, Go to High School, Go to College, Project Alpha, Boy Scouts, and the March of Dimes. The Mu Omicron Lambda chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is committed to Alpha mission of developing leaders, promoting brotherhood and academic excellence, while providing service and advocacy to the community. More information about the Mu Omicron Lambda chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is available at MOL Alphas on Facebook or via email at molalphas at gmail.com. Do you like the music you hear on KLEK 102.5 FM? Do you like the educational programming that we provide? Do you like the service we provide to the community? Do you like having a station to finally call your own that represents you? If so, please stop by or call any of our underwriters or sponsors that you hear on KLEK and tell them thank you for their support. The support of our underwriters and sponsors is vital for us to stay on the air. So be sure to let them know that you thank them for their support. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. All right, welcome back to our last segment of Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. My special guest today has been Reverend Dr. Greg Ota from New Life Empowerment Development Centers. Oh, you're getting it right today. Incorporated, yes, yeah, <laughs> like you <tongue> <laughs> All right, so we're going to, you know, continue, kind of wrap up our conversation concerning the summer program, which starts June 3rd, mm-hmm. uh, starting at 9 a.m. and goes to 2 p.m. each day, mm-hmm. and it's a 10-week program, and they get to learn, the students get to learn various um, skills, Skill. activities. Um, the list is very interesting, so I'll really hope that you get your child registered again space is limited and is totally free um so please contact the computer lab on marshall street um what is the address again please? 601 marshall street 
601 Marshall Street, mm -hmm. which is off of Belt Street on the north side of Jonesboro. Mm -hmm. So go see Reverend Ota and the team, and they will get your child signed up. And at the end of the program, they get a certificate of completion, mm -hmm. and they get a load of skill, new skill. They learn a load of new skills. They're exposed mm -hmm. to a lot of new things. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but before we went to break, I was asking a question about... Um, a PC, which is a desktop, mm -hmm. versus a laptop, and do you teach those uh, differences or similarities to the kids that come through your program? We do. Not well now. Even if we didn't, now you brought it up. We'll okay. teach it. <laughs> <laughs> now, what we teach people who are intimidated by the computer, we use uh, the file cabinet. It's an example. Okay. In the file cabinet, there are drawers in it. Okay. And on the on the top of the file cabinet is space. Okay. So the file cabinet can contain 100 files. But because of the space on the top, I can only put one file at a time. Mm -hmm. The top of the file cabinet is the RAM, the okay. random access memory. Okay. The things I could find very quickly, they're on the desktop, they're on the file cabinet top. Okay. The hard drive is the file cabinet itself contains all these files. Okay. So every time I want to look at something, I pull it out of the file cabinet and I put it on the file cabinet top. Okay. As big as the file cabinet top is, is the 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 the, the, the size of the RAM. Mm -hmm. That's how big information I can access randomly while it's on the cabinet top. Okay. So if the cabinet top is big, I can access several files at the same time. Okay. That's why your RAM needs to be big. Okay. Now the file cabinet is five drawers. There's three drawers. That's the size of the hard drive. Okay. Okay. So now the keyboard is the finger, is the hand. Okay. The mouse is the finger that I point at the same thing in my hard drive to bring it on the desktop. Okay. The monitor is the eyes that lets me see what's inside the brain. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> now, that's a desktop. Okay. So I have a monitor, I have a hard drive, I have a keyboard, I have a mouse. I just explained it to you. Okay. The laptop is the same, except the eye, the fingers, and the hand is all in one place. Okay. So the touchpad is the finger. Okay. The keyboard is the hand. The screen is the eye. The hard drive is, the file cabinet is under the keyboard. Okay. But it's only one piece. I don't carry five pieces. I only carry one. So they're essentially the same. They're essentially the same, except that I have put everything from five different components into one. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. That's well. the difference between a desktop and a laptop. Okay, that's the only... Alrighty, well, thank you for that quick lesson of the day. All right, want to say good morning to Miss Amanda Donovan and Mr. Austin said, Doc, he's, I'm in Oklahoma City. <laughs> oh, he's in Oklahoma City. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know he was here. Okay. Well, we thank everybody again for checking in. Thank you for having me. And thank you, Reverend Elton, for coming by. And it's always a fun time. Um, one day we're going to get him to do a whole sermon on the air. <laughs> on what? A whole sermon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> one day. But you can always catch Reverend Elton every Wednesday morning, 8 a.m. with the Wednesday morning Bible study with a special guest. Mm -hmm. um, and so it will be live on Facebook and then upload to YouTube later. So thank you so much, Reverend Oda, for joining us. God bless you. Thanks for having me. And thank you everyone out there for listening and tuning in and supporting KLEK. Can I give them the number one more time? Yes, please. 277 1799. All right. Call. We'll take your call. All right. Call God bless the, you. Call the computer lab or stop by 601 Marshall Street. Mm -hmm. um, get your child registered for the summer program. Starts June 3rd. Um, and it's a 10 week program. And it goes from 9 to 2, Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday. All right. And so we hope to see. Oh, and spaces are limited. So, I mean, spaces are limited. Very limited. Take it too full, but yeah. <laughs> we hope to see all the spots take it up. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, all we right. thank you so much. God bless you. All right. Everyone have a great and blessed day and try to stay a little cool out there it's getting warmer now it's getting warmer. <laughs> all right see you later